welcome everyone to my presentation, 10 Warning Signs in IT Projects. Um, before we start, raise your hand if you've worked on a project more than 50 hours per week. Okay, raise your hand if you've worked more than 60 hours per week on a project. Now, how many of you actually cancel your vacation, uh, your weekends for a project that is behind schedule? Okay, so don't worry, you're not alone. Here are some crazy statistics for you. 70% of IT projects fail in a way or another. 66% of projects go over budget, 33% go over schedule, and 17% under deliver value. This is crazy, and it needs to stop. My name is Yann Olivier, I'm a consultant, I'm a developer for Coolab, and I specialize in project rescue. I also organize the Compu Conference, maybe you guys, some of you guys know that. <clears throat> What I want you to take, what, I, what my objective is for this presentation is to help you identify project traps early. I want to prevent the headaches, the anxiety, and the uh, stress related to those projects. And most importantly, I want you to spend more time with your family because this is the most important thing that you have in life. It's not the project. <clears throat> Here, I'm going to describe a couple words. Uh, they, they seem very obvious, but based on the discussions I've had over the years with many developers and even managers, we don't know these words. They're very basic, or we forget their meaning. So I'll spend a bit of time. An objective is what we're trying to accomplish as a business or uh, for a project. It has nothing to do with features or methodologies or framework. For example, a startup that I know is building an application for uh, managing events. Their objective is to help organization manage events and increase uh, attendees' retention. That's their objectives. Uh, like you see, like I haven't mentioned any framework, I haven't mentioned if it's uh, an, an application that is hosted or what. Um, metrics? It's a system that enables you to measure how far you are from reaching your objectives. Um, success, it's when you reach those objectives. Obviously, you need metrics to know if you're successful or not. And failure, well, it, according to the statistics that I've shown, it appears we're pretty good at failing, so I don't really need to talk about it. Uh, actually, uh, in fact, in a lot of start, in, in the startup community, even failure is praised. This is pretty, this is pretty, I, 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 this is pretty weird according to me. I understand we need to, we need to uh, learn things from failure, uh, but that's another topic. So, some of the warning signs. Um, <clears throat> stakeholders uh, don't agree on the objectives or don't know what they are. I once worked on a project where there were multiple stakeholders or multiple people that tried to be stakeholders uh, and had different agendas, different objectives. Uh, so what happened is people, uh, in the end, those people were fighting to define the, uh, the direction of the project and um, it created various tensions between the, the various parties. Uh, <clears throat> goals are not communicated properly or are not understood by the team, by the developers, the managers, the integrators, um, or are simply poorly defined. I often get customers that call me and uh, you know, they explain me all their, their project, all the features, they even tell me which design pattern they want to see implemented in the, in the project. And we haven't even talked about what the goal of this project is supposed to be. I think we're a bit ahead of ourselves. <clears throat> so, uh, what, do, what can we do to uh, help us define those objectives. Here are uh, three simple questions. Ask yourself, uh, what are we trying to accomplish uh, as a business? How, what, um, what are we trying to improve? Uh, what are we trying to do with this project? 
Get stakeholders to sign a contract. If in the case that you have multiples, uh, even if you don't have multiple stakeholders, but you want them to, you want them to commit on the business objectives, right? You, it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be a one-page uh, contract where you you um, you mention in bullet list uh, all the objectives, and you want them to sign that contract. You want them to commit on the vision, on the direction of this project, and what we're going to do. Objectives never really change. Have a kickoff meeting. Explain all those objectives to all the people in the team that are, or all the people that are um, related to this project. This includes developers, this includes integrators, um, managers, team leaders, and even part people in marketing. Uh, because a project is not just a thing for, for, for the developers in IT. Uh, it involves everybody. Everybody's involved in the success of the project. Print those goals and those uh, and print those goals. Hang them on, on posters in your office. Write them on the walls. Print them and put them right beside your screen. Every time you take a decision for your software, uh, ask yourself how does it bring us closer to the objectives. These goals will enable you uh, to focus. And in times of uh, when you're in a tough situation. Those goals will actually be a motivator, or at least shine some light on uh, what needs to be done. Uh, communicate all those goals with the team members. I've covered that. Deadlines. We've all worked on a project that um, we believe it's going to take uh, four months to uh, to accomplish, but for some reason we try to squish it in one month or a month and a half. Uh, because of management or for other reasons, uh, but this is this is a very first mistake because what you're going to do at some point, uh, you're going to start working overtime and you're going to get ex exhausted, uh, or or the deadline is too far. This is actually a, one of my favorite. It, it's very innocent. Uh, people don't realize this is actually a project trap. Um, I'll share an experience with you uh, that happened to me a lot of time with uh, me and my partner. Uh, we go in a bar. The bar is empty. Uh, we sit down and uh, we wait for service. You know, I look at my watch, five minutes go by, ten minutes go by. Um, okay, you might say I'm a very polite person and I'm not trying to disturb, and, uh, but that's part of the task that I, I do usually. And what happens after that is other people walking in the bar and they actually get service, they get their drinks and I still haven't been welcomed. Uh, so what is happening in this situation is initially the waiter doesn't have enough work uh, to actually care about the room and who's, if there are actually customers. It's only until there's a certain number of people in the room that he will realize, oh, I got customers, I should go serve them. Um, I'm sure you've, you've, you've seen that in IT projects as well. We're all tempted to, when we're starting a project and the deadline is very far, we're very tempted to um, you know, start playing with frameworks, implementing things in a certain direction, and then all oh, the direction is not good, and then we, we, we uh, rewrite this code. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a big, um, to me that's, that's a big warning sign when the deadline is too far. So, some of the solutions that I found is, um, especially when the deadline is too tight, use simple solutions. Use solutions that you master. Don't go for those frameworks that you don't know how they work. Uh, stick with the very things that you know. Negotiate the, the de delivery date if possible. Uh, in the case that I once worked on a project where um, the de I was working on a uh, pooling system for uh, elections. Unfortunately, uh, you can't move the, the deadline for elections, you know? You can't postpone that. Uh, so in, that, in the case that you can't move the deadline, what you need to do is you need to um, negotiate the deliverables, uh, prioritize features based on objectives. You really, what you really want is accomplish the maximum of things within that deadline reach as many objectives as possible, get as close as possible. Not every feature needs to be delivered. There's a lot of nice to have 
and we spend most of our time on the nice to haves. Um, <clears throat> so progress. Uh, we, uh, you don't have any demo within the first month of uh, your project. You're launching your project. You don't have a demo within the first month. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, after a month, you should have something. Or you start missing demos. Uh, you know, you did your first demo, you, you start second demo, you start missing your third, your fourth demo. This is very bad. Or you don't even have a demo. Uh, I once worked on a project where uh, a company was working on this project for about a year. And uh, the uh, this organization hasn't seen, uh, well, has been outsourcing this project, and they haven't seen anything for a year. So they contacted us. Uh, we, con we did our investigation, and what we've discovered is the consulting agency uh, basically had just documentation, PDFs, HTML, and uh, no backend, no nothing. Uh, it was on paper, it was all nice, you know, they were using MongoDB, Node.js, and all these crazy things. Great on paper, you know, but they had nothing to show. Um, and in fact, the solution was pretty simple, but, you know, that's a different story. Um, so, you should have weekly, uh, weekly demos. Uh, in the case, if you're a manager, you know, uh, with uh, virtual machines, uh, you should ask, uh, you should, I, I always ask people to give me their development URLs. I understand from the developer perspective, this, is, this can be uh, somewhat scary because we think that the managers is gonna spy on us, you know, uh, to see if we're doing something. But management really has much better things to do, um, like managing the business and things like that. Uh, but it will give them at least uh, assurance that if they don't see any progress, they're gonna be able to check things out. Follow git commits. Uh, we've uh, worked on the project, and a uh, developer, you know, was in the status meeting was always uh, giving, sorry, was always uh, very positive and all that. But once it was time to deliver the project, he had nothing. He didn't commit anything. Obviously, this person got fired because he was just like talking and uh, but had nothing to show. <laughs> Uh, so git commits are not a true sign of progress, but at least you're going to know that something is being done. Uh, yellow flag your task when you're 50% uh, through the time allocated to the task. Red flag it if you're 75% uh, for the time allocated to the task. Why I say that? If you wait till your all the time is burned for that task to actually red flag it, well, my my friend, it's too late. You're, now what, what's going to happen is you're going to take time within the project buffer. What, what will happen if the, uh, an, an unexpected event happens and now you need time? Well, the buffer is going to be already taken up. Uh, so yeah, red flag it uh, when you're at 75%. At least your, your, your manager is going to be able to take uh, time, take a decision. Maybe what you're working on is not even that important. Pointing fingers, uh, team spirit. Pointing fingers. I once worked on a project where uh, the uh, the um, excuse me the um, product owner. I was in a meeting with a product owner and some developers. The product owner actually started bashing on a team that was not part of this meeting. You know, uh, saying how all the problems were caused by this team and all that. That's very negative. Uh, this kind of attitude, no matter who is speaking like that, should not be tolerated because this kind of negative energy spreads very, very fast within a business. It demotivates people. And uh, if you expect these people to work for you after, uh, you're totally wrong. Uh, so, yeah, I pretty much covered that. Uh, so, what you need to do in that case, you need to break the conversation. Change the conversation from uh, the problem to a so, uh, from a problem oriented discussion to a so, uh, to a uh, uh, solution oriented discussion. So, what can we do uh, to improve the current situation? What can we do to change this situation? 
uh, in the case that it's a team member, um, meet with the people that have that attitude. Explain them what kind of what it, how it affects the team spirit, how it affects the success of the project. And if they don't understand and they persist, well, you have to remove this person from the project. It's the rotten apple within the basket. You don't want that. Uh, get them to move them on their uh, move them on a, another project where um, their time is going to be better used. Uh, get to know your team members. Uh, I once worked in a company where the sysadmin was uh, a big skier, and so am I. So we went on weekends skiing, uh, and after sometimes, you know, we developed a good friendship. And when I asked some things to be done, it would get done in a record time. Nobody in the business would, could actually get those kind of results. Don't underestimate the power of beer. <laughs> So, communications. No one ever reports the true status of the project. Uh, we all have those nice stand-up meetings where we say, okay, I, yesterday I've done that, and today I will do this. And, uh, well, when we face problems, we rarely say that we're facing issues or we're saying it, but way too late. Uh, and this is because the ego takes over. We're afraid of what people will think of us uh, because we don't master this framework or you know something is coming up. Or we don't feel motivated or things like that. Uh, people find excuses. Uh, for example, well it's the framework, you know, we need to upgrade it. Uh, there's a new uh, uh, there's a new feature, it's gonna be much simpler with that. Uh, a lot of excuses like that are, are often uh, provided. Uh, people forward you to documentation. Uh, that means people don't want to talk to you. Uh, they don't want to take that five or ten minutes to explain you how it works. Um, instead, they forward you to that 50-page documentation. That's totally bad. <laughs> I don't have time for that. Language. In Canada, we have French and English. Uh, which is a two national language and not everyone speaks or speaks properly both languages uh, or time zone. If you work in, on a project that, ha that has uh, teams in different time zones, uh, this can be an issue. Some of the things that you need to do in this, in this space, well what I've done on a project is um, I actually uh, readjusted the schedule of everybody uh, to accommodate um, uh, the different uh, time schedule. Um, talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. With the one-on-one -on -one conversation, you will have a much better understanding of what's happening in the project than with the status meetings. Yes, it requires much more time to uh, have those discussions, but the insight that you will have is very interesting. Um, and in the case that people provide excuses, find the root cause. What's really the problem? Is it really the framework the problem? Focus. A lot of us are, we're all technical people. We like to focus on architecture, frameworks, methodologies. Uh, this is all great. Uh, but in a project, what I found that, uh, especially in the tight deadline, these are all distractions. Distractions from reaching the objectives. Yes, I know, I'm a very boring person. Um, and one of the things is adding cool features. I uh, once had a customer uh, who, uh, we worked on this project for some time, it was after three months, we were pretty much done. And uh, ready to go in production, uh, and um, you know, that pretty much ended my contract there. But anyhow, they kept on going and adding features and features and features. One year later, they were still not done. This is called gold plating. You know, things in life are never perfect enough. Um, <clears throat> last minute changes. Another great story. Uh, I don't know if you guys know uh, what is Black Friday. Yes? Okay, so this customer uh, called us one day, their site was slow. It was Black Friday. 
They were losing about $100,000 per hour, you know, big money. And uh, what we found out, so they called us, you know, uh, to, to help fix the problem because it was urgent. Um, what we found out is someone actually released something the day before, and it was not tested. It, in the end, it was an SQL query that was just, you know, used in all the listing, all the search and all that, and it was just killing the database. You know, never do last minute changes before Black Friday or something like that. That's, you know, ridiculous. <clears throat> so, uh, so plan time for R&D outside of your project. You know, not within your project. Don't test your tools within your project. Uh, deliver value, not features. This is super important because delivering features is just working for working. What you want is generate business value. Uh, and always ask yourself, how does it bring us closer to the objective? This is the most important question. This will help you focus on what needs to be done and what's the most important thing for the project. Uh, 50 page uh, documentation. Nobody wants to read your 50 page novel. Uh, or there's just no documentation. Uh, this is stupid, you know, like you don't even know if, if you're, I, I once worked on, on a project where uh, all the documentation was in the CTO's head. So every time there was a new employee, uh, the new employee would go see the CTO and then he would like draw everything on the board again and you know, wasting a whole lot of time. This is not, you know, use your, use your brain a little bit, write your documentation and print it, share it. Uh, mm. So, centralize all your documentation within your Git repository with your code. That way you don't have to go fetch your documentation in your email, in your Dropbox, in Google Docs, or wherever it may be in the, on that napkin. <clears throat> so, um, use tools. Like I personally use Asta for a UML uh, for uh, all the uh, documenting, all the process and all that, Balsamic for, for all the functional analysis. Write readable code. I shouldn't have to use a special algorithm to decrypt your code. Uh, the ghost problem, uh, quality, the ghost problem. You fix one problem and five more pops up. The endless bug list. Uh, you obviously have an architecture problem. Uh, you don't have time for quality assurance or performance testing. I once worked for on a project for a TV channel, and you know, like, oh yeah, it's gonna be fine, it's gonna be okay. We put it, and I, you know, I, we we put it in production, and obviously it was not okay. <clears throat> so uh, have a, now with virtual machines, it's super easy to have. Uh, a, dev a proper development environment that reflects your production. Uh, so you use virtual machines. De determine your mission critical components. Test them. These are. This is your engine. You need to write unit tests for them. Uh, you know, nobody cares if the AC doesn't work. You can go to the next city without AC. Uh, <clears throat> Determine how many users per hour that you're gonna. This software is gonna is gonna is um, is gonna be it. You know, uh, have QA do have QA do their work before any demo. You don't want to go see the stakeholders do your presentation and it blows up in front of in front of them. You don't want that. That's gonna hurt your reputation. <clears throat> Metrics. You have no way to measure the expected outcome. So how, how do you know if you breach your objectives if you don't know how to measure it? So you should determine the level of, you or, well, management should determine the level of, of business success this software should have. And you should determine the level of quality expected and the level of performance expected out of this software. I have a project where I have five scenarios. One catastrophic scenario, one that is not too bad, one that is okay, one that is super awesome. And this enables me, as, as this project moves forward, I know exactly where I'm standing. This is important, because you don't want... 
since you're looking to reach your objectives, you don't want to keep on working if you've already reached your objectives. Stop, you've reached your objectives. Unless you like to work for no reason. <clears throat> so what I want you to take away from this presentation is a project fails one day at a time. You don't see it, it's just very quietly drifting. So always stay sharp, look for those warning signs. Always ask yourself, how does it bring us closer to the objective? This is, this is really the key. Plan for the unexpected. I have another story regarding plans for the unexpected. Um, my coworker worked on a project where the only developer uh, got diagnosed with cancer. He needed immediate atten medical attention. And obviously there was no documentation, no nothing. So plan for these things. You never expect someone to go away very quickly. So you should, you should plan for these things. And don't underestimate the power of fear. It's going to accomplish great things for your project. And I hope <laughs> yeah, it's going to accomplish great things for your project and for yourself. Um, so anyways, uh, this is my presentation. Uh, do you have any questions? From what I understand, there's beer now, so... Oh yeah, I see people already started. <laughs> Questions? No? Alright, thank you.